Aha. Yeah. That starts it. Kick starts. It's definitely, it's like literally a kick start. This is what you can do. With the horizontal swing, you convince people that the speed is really coming from the legs. Yeah, 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 right. Let's do all these in a exactly. row. Yeah, so right. stage one, stage two, three, and then normal swing. Yeah. So actually, any of these stages can be used as a pre-shot routine. Mm -hmm. So yep. before you hit the ball, yep. you can do a stage one or just a stage two or stage three, and then approach the ball and hit the ball. So let's do a one, two, three, and then your normal swing yeah. with active back swing. One, two, three. So always, let's do, let's do this. Always count to one first. Okay. So one, always upward motion. One, two. So one, the first one, one, two, three. One, one prepares you. Straight up. Yeah, one prepares you. Yeah. And the two is the trigger motion. Priming the and then three is the back swing. Yeah, okay. so and then up, 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 okay? Up, up, up. One. Two, three. And then make sure you close, you keep uh, the shoulders and hips closed Longer. when you start the downswing. Yes. All right. So now let me uh, record uh, your normal swing. All right, normal swing, no. Uh, just, just uh, yeah, no trigger motion. Yep. But fast the back swing, remember. Yep. You will be surprised oh, yeah? if you look at the swing motion. Yes, okay. You're very foldy. Yeah, you just yeah, lift your arm here. It's following the you upper, up, the Lift your arm and then just to try to uh, do a lot of things during the down swing. Um, Yeah. Everything is flowing a lot better. Yeah, much more flow. So as you practice this more and more, mm -hmm. then uh, you will be able to uh, develop better rhythm. Mm -hmm. So still you are fighting you know, your old habit of uh, Spin out. Turning, yeah, spinning out like this and yeah. then opening the pelvis. But um, when you practice this again and again, mm -hmm. you will be able to overcome that. Okay. You know, you have done this uh, so, so many years. So, so, the, so the two tough habits to overcome, not just for me, but I think for a lot of people, first would be spinning rather than setting before you turn, like mm -hmm. letting the, the stomp. So, step yeah. So when you have a good, good push here, naturally you will have a good uh, downswing motion. So you don't have to intentionally uh, spin, spin out. Okay. All right, the second part that's, I think, going to be really hard for people to get over, for me and for a lot of people, is having that upper body dominant motion. Because you're holding the club with your hands. Your hands have eventually got to do the thing. So you try to like shortcut the process and just do it with your hands only. Mm -hmm. So what do you think is the best way to, for, for the, to calm the hands down a little bit? Okay, so um, let's do the so-called uh, horizontal swing. Okay. And then, so assume you're in regular stance, uh -huh. and then keep the club horizontal. And then we, we do the trigger motion again. Mm -hmm. So you have a shift uh, leftward, yeah. support the, the body with the yeah, yeah. Yeah, left here. And then as you bring this back, doing the back swing, mm -hmm. you only, for the wrist, you, you will only introduce the wrist the cock. Yeah. Okay? Don't try to use your arm. Not arm forward yeah. reduction. Yeah. And then simply, so from here, go here, and then try to swing horizontally again. Yeah. So it's called the level swing uh, drill. So we go right in front of the left. Okay. So now, now, as you approach, as you approach the end of the back swing, yeah. lower your body slightly, okay. and then start the down swing by kicking the ground with your left leg. Better? More, more down and up. So downswing starts with the kicking up. <clears throat> you just uh, still try to uh, rotate. Yeah. But instead of uh, rotating yeah. here, kick the ground and then let the arm right, go. Let's do it a little slower. Please. So I'm going. Kick the ground. Instead of uh, sliding the pelvis again, that's uh, your. Let me let me show you this. Yeah, yeah. That's your, you know, habit. But uh, so here. Go here and then bring it back and then lower your body slightly and then simply kicking up and 
there you go. So here. And then you don't have to swing hard with your arms because if you kick the ground with your legs, then you will have speed. <laughs> so with this, you will be able to learn that, that the speed is really coming from the lower body. So here, here. So as I'm taking it back, I'm lowering the kick. But instead of sliding the pelvis this way, simply just to lower your body. Yeah. And by kicking the ground with your left leg, and then throw the club. Yes. Oh yeah, you feel this is like, <laughs> On a motorcycle, like kickstart. Yep. Boom. Yep. Now you are getting it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then have a bit more time in the back. Yes. You see now as you start using your leg, mm -hmm. you see the, you hear the sound. Yeah, the whoosh is different. Yes. Yeah. And then feel that, and then let's go to your normal swing. Yeah. And they have something similar. Okay, kick the ground with your little leg. That's the back swing. Oh, yeah. The, the whoosh <laughs> was very late and different. Yeah. And that was 109. Was so when you don't kick the ground that well, when you don't have a good uh, vertical uh, you know, push, Kicks then what happens is you tend to slide horizontally. Oh, okay. But if you strengthen your vertical rhythm, then you have a less horizontal motion. So kick the ground and then just simply, yes. Now we are talking about very different swing here. This is what you can do. With the horizontal swing, you convince people that the speed is really coming from the legs. Yeah, 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 it does. Because yep. it's like, yep. that starts it, kick starts. It's definitely, it's like literally a kick start. Yeah, so now, ready, Yeah. go. So then you don't open your body early because yeah. you have to push the ground with the leg. I'm here, I'm lowering. Re the recentering gets some weight on there so that yes, you're, yes. you're charged and loaded. Then boom. The, the whole purpose of recentering is putting more weight on this side. Oh, okay. And then kicking yeah, the ground. If I'm over here and I push, it doesn't matter. So when you no, don't, no force, but if when you don't here, push, no. when you don't push, then what happens is your pelvis slides. You have to slide. Yeah, usually people say a slide is a bad thing. You slide it like this oh, is bad. Yeah. But if you have a good leg action, you don't have to slide this. Rather, just kick the ground and then turn around. Yeah. Now we're talking about very different speed here. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's, no. that's, that was now you're using le your legs more. Yeah. yeah. And if we look at the, the bricks on the wall, my head isn't really moving a lot this way and that way very much at all. Mm. Your low body is active, but your head, your head is not moving that much. Because when you interact with the ground, you push uh, the ground laterally, mm -hmm. so the force is acting this way, mm -hmm. and then it will confine the head motion mm -hmm. into this. Yeah. So you have an active uh, lower body motion here, yeah. but your head, head does not move. The worst is uh, the opposite. Yeah. Lower body doesn't move, but the, and then, the upper goes everywhere. So uh, during the back swing, you just spin around, and the yeah. spine is uh, leaned away from the target. Mm -hmm. And from this, you have to slide, mm -hmm. and then Let's do another around. one, Dr. Kwan, where, where you hold this, you hold the stick here, and then I'm going to try to, just like, just, you just kind of athletically figure out, but I'm going to go there, there, boom, boom. Yep, kick yeah. the ground, uh, during the down swing, kick the ground. So I feel like there's like a pound of pressure there, half yeah. a pound of pressure yeah. there, and yeah. then I'm going to keep that. So that would be too much, and that would be too light. Here we go. Oh, yeah, that's different. So really, when you use your, your lead leg, then you don't have to put a lot of effort with your arms, because the whole body is basically rotating with the leg action. So that's why the pelvis motion is so important. What, what was this drill that I've seen you do, what I call the, like, the tick-tock drill? Yeah, it's, a, it's called a stage X. It's a continuous swing. Uh -huh. Oh, uh, that's, that's actually a, a good point here. Yeah. When a golfer has problem in terms of uh, the uh, swing motion during the backswing, yeah. so going too low or high, 
Oh yeah, like under. Yeah, then the best remedy is uh, repeating this uh, swing back and forth continuously. Oh, it's a backswing kind of thing, mm -hmm. uh, a trigger getting started. So when you uh, keep moving and then try to have a consistent motion, mm -hmm. then the club has to move along the swing plane, good mm -hmm. swing plane, right? And if it goes down here, then you have to compensate that. Yeah, if it's looping where it's going back and forth, it'll find that, that naturally efficient yes. path. Yes. But if it's dead stop and then a start, it could be. Yeah. And also, particularly when the backswing is slow, then you go low and high, you have all different things. Right. Sometimes you use uh, earlier uh, wrist cock. Mm -hmm. All these are happening because your backswing is slow and your body doesn't know what to do. Yeah. Not only, like, not only does it have to be a faster backswing, I felt, because like, if I just think faster backswing, I might do it with that. But it feels like it's got to be a forceful backswing. And then body-driven backswing. Yeah, and body-driven. Yeah. With yeah. that, you, ha you don't have that much room, mm -hmm. so you will have to guide the club you know, around the swing plane. But I will also uh, bring out a rope. Okay? Oh, you know, let's do that. Yeah, let's go. Okay. Um, when you repeat the swing yeah. back and forth without uh, you know, a pose. Continuous. Continuously. Yeah. Then in order to have a really consistent motion back and forth, then you have to guide the rope properly using the body. So swing, swing, swing. You can kick the ground with the leg. Kick the ground with the leg, kick, yeah. kick, but in terms of the arm motion, you're not doing this. Okay. So you have to feel the motion here, so okay. gently yeah. throw Kick and started. then bring it back. Yeah, right. mm. little toss to the lead side. Yeah. And then let's do a, you don't have to swing it hard, but instead let's Continue. do this continuously. Yeah. Yeah. Kickstart it this way, this way. Very good. Very good. <clears throat> yeah, a little bit of steps. <clears throat> little steps. Very good. Yeah, this you can really start making the connection between the, <clears throat> the kickstart here and then how much whip it gets here. Yeah. yeah. The, the nice thing about the rope is that it's a flexible, so you cannot really control the motion of the Torque rope using, using the, your wrist, right? Yeah. So you have to guide the rope properly with your body. Mm -hmm. So if you just throw, then the rope falls onto your body. Mm -hmm. But if you have continuous turn, and then add the arm motion here, then it will wrap around your body. So, it will cross your right shoulder mm -hmm. and then go around your armpit here. And then this way exactly opposite, over the shoulder, and it goes around your chest here. Bring it back here, let it go here. So you'll be able to uh, have continuous motion. And then you don't have to use your arm a lot. Mm -hmm. So just the using the rhythmic body motion, right and then continuous turn, you will be able to guide the rope nicely and right. consistently. Right. Yes. Yeah, you can add effort in the downswing more and more. Yes, but now your downswing yeah. is very different from your initial downswing because your initial downswing, you opened your body early and then it was more inward swing plane, inward. but now, this, yes, this, now, it's very uh, nice swing plane here. And then the swing plane is really consistent back and forth here. Yes. So it'll naturally uh, discourage the early opening of the chest when you try to swing the rope yeah. nicely like this. Cool. Yeah. So when you have a club in your hands, suddenly you do all sorts of things. But when you use a, a tool like this, yeah. then you will be able to uh, you know, revisit what you're doing. And the rope swing is good for warm-up purposes, but at the same time, uh, sort of, uh, what is it, uh, gauging or, or refining your swing plane. Why is it good for a swing plane? Because uh, the only way you can uh, swing it consistently in, 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 is keeping it uh, near the swing plane. Oh, okay. So you don't have to, you don't have to introduce any compensation motion right. because the swing motion is naturally... I feel like if this was a, a rope and I was doing continuous swing, So 
So as I said, as I said, even with the club, when you swing it back and forth continuously, mm -hmm. then it will help you a lot to establish uh, the swing plane. So you don't, you will not have outrageously outward swing plane or inward swing plane. So of all this stuff, maybe one of the best things for people who don't have an instructor right in front of them watching is continuous swings of any yes. type would be yes. good because your body will, will find what's efficient and natural. Yep. Yeah. And then so during this motion back and forth, your body will actively accelerate and actively decelerate and then change the direction. Acceleration, deceleration, acceleration, deceleration. You will repeat this. That's the key in the dynamic motion. Right. The main feature in dynamic uh, motion is uh, acceleration, deceleration. Yeah. But you are not going to have an abrupt acceleration, yeah. abrupt deceleration. Abrupt, yeah. These will uh, cause injuries. So you have to have a gradual acceleration, de deceleration. Yeah. The best way to do it is uh, make a continuous motion. So another uh, you know, drill that I, I often use is, um, so you can have really slow motion, okay? But then, but make the motion continuous, okay? Slow, but continuous motion, and also use your lower body. So, and then add the speed a bit faster, still continuous, and then you can make it really fast. So still all these are continuous motion, but you can intentionally you know, try different uh, uh, speeds. So we'll start off kind of like this all Ben Hogan did. A slow but continuous motion. You have to use your body and then let it go, okay? Continuous motion. It's a body driven, not your arm driven. So, uh, so but, but the wall with your back and then turn around, yes. And then increase the speed. Backswing speed as well, backswing speed as well. You could make a continuous motion, yes. It's under your control. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thanks for watching everybody. Click the subscribe button now to make sure that you see all the videos that are coming out that I shot with Dr. Kwan. If you'd like to see all the raw footage, everything right now, right this second before it's even edited, it's about three hours and 45 minutes of footage, including a session that I did with Dr. Kwan that's a super in-depth, a session that Mike Padilla did with Dr. Kwan, who is like a plus five, almost pro golfer, and also a LPGA hopeful golfer who is one of the top amateurs in the country, came in and did the full 3D analysis and everything, and it really got deep into the swing plane and everything. So if you're really interested in the next cutting edge of golf swing analysis and also implementation about how to make people better using this information, and you don't wanna wait for all the Be Better Golf videos that are gonna come out and you wanna see all of the footage, go to bebettergolf.net slash premium. You'll see it there. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for supporting the channel, too. Bye. And, and my bucket of balls is there. What should I be doing first? So before you hit the, uh, the ball, mm -hmm. initially what you can do is you can go through all the stages. Mm -hmm. okay? And then as you get more used to this, then you can uh, choose a particular drill which works the best for you. Mm -hmm. It could be perhaps uh, uh, stage three. And that'll be like my pre-shot routine. Yes, and then eventually you develop this pre-shot routine, and then you know do this consistently. Then uh, you know it will give you good rhythm, yeah. feel of uh, good rhythm, and then hit the ball.